So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the is it the 22nd of May, uh, 2019. And we are here to uh, think about the summertime, think about LRNG. Um, we've invited a few folks. Uh, that, the folks from Orlando are coming in a couple of weeks. So that'll be fun. So we're inviting pe people from different LRNG cities. Um, as I just said to Jessica Rosenberg here, um, my big thought here was that um, when we see each other every once in a while um, online and so forth, I always want more time for Jessica to describe what they're doing. So Jessica Rosenberg is the manager, this is your title, right? Mm -hmm. Manager of the Digital Learning and Pathways at the Chicago Learning Exchange. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say for short? CLX. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get to know you. Jeff Durkheim is, did I say that correctly? Not, not no. close, no. <laughs> Who are you, Jeff, Jeff? Deerking. Deerking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jeff Deerking is here. Jeff, um, what are you doing this summer with LRNG? Uh, I'm leading the assessment team, um, and we'll be looking at uh, submissions to the playlists. All right. And... Um, you have about five titles. Um, you want to <laughs> say I what you really do? That yeah, good uh, in job Kansas job City, right? Jobs. Yeah, I teach at a vocational school near Kansas City in a suburb called Raytown. Um, I teach um, English to Votech students, uh, which is an interesting kind of hybrid online class that we've been developing uh, for kids who want to be there all day. Um, and then um, I manage dual credit for the district and the du oh. the district department coordinator and probably several other things that I can't even remember. Very cool. Christina Cantrell. Hi, and I'm Christina Cantrell and I work at the National Writing Project. And uh, I'm connecting from Albuquerque where we're having a um, director's retreat, which has really um, been great. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm working with, um, Jeff on the national assessment work. I'm really excited he's going to lead that this summer. And went on with Paul on some playlist creation and um, uh, thinking about playlists and badges in school settings. We hope Jeff will actually work with us on that too. So, yeah. And also excited to hear what folks are doing in the summer in their cities. Cool. And I'm Paul Allison, and I work with the New York City Writing Project and with Christina and with the National Writing Project. And I'm in two schools, and um, in one school doing a, to doing a poetry English class for ninth and 10th graders with a teacher, totally using um, LRNG to kind of construct the curriculum and build portfolios. We hope, we hope we're getting like right to the end. And um, also a school up in the Bronx as well. Um, when does school end in New York, Paul? Um, for the students, you're going to like the 26th of okay. June, right? So, yeah. Okay. It's crazy. Um, anyway, so um, it's Chicago tonight. Sure. <laughs> uh, Jessica, jump us in somehow. How do you want to start? Uh, I can share a screen and you can point me around and or do you know how to share a screen here? On here, I'm Thanks. not sure. So what would be most helpful? Is it like from a, is it from a pedagogical standpoint or is it from um, a logistics, is it a logistical question? I, let's start logistical and then we'll get, because okay. it's easy for us to get pedagogical, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. I think that probably, I don't want to, um, I think this is an example of doing this work at massive scale, which requires um, a change in rigor. Um, and I think, I think that's important when thinking about what it takes to do something ma massively. Um, so I can talk about the context and how it's being implemented. I can talk probably for an hour about that, but I, I can try to keep it to like five to 10 minutes. Does that work? And then we could go from there. Sure, let's start there. Okay, so I'll give you guys a bit of background. Um, 
Uh, uh, I was, uh, I joined CLX in May of 2016. So I'm at my three year mark now. And when I joined LRNG was sort of just rolling out and it had been decided that LRNG would be piloted for one summer Chicago, which is the second largest youth employment program in the country. Second only to, um, summer youth employment in New York. And what are the numbers like? Uh, they have 31,000 youth in it. Okay. Um, now, what LRG was intended to do, I, I think, I'm not sure sort of like, uh, I would never recommend a pilot of that, uh, of any sort of citywide initiative like that. I would recommend sort of s small groups. But the way one summer, the way one summer structured is that there are a few lead partner agencies. There's the Department of Family and Support Services, Chicago Housing Authority, Parks, um, the Forest Preserve, uh, Career and Technical Education at CPS, and a, a few others, um, uh, After School Matters. And they each work, not each of them, but uh, some of them work with like delegate agencies, basically programs that are actually in charge of uh, placing young people in jobs and doing job training with them. And they get funding from those lead partners, okay? So the partners that we have been, that we worked with and we are still working very closely with are DFSS, which sort of is the lead partner, uh, CHA, Chicago Housing Authority, and uh, Career and Technical Education at CPS. And um, how this was structured, so which they have about um, probably about 8,000 8, youth that they work with, it with out of the, or 8,500 maybe out of the 31,000, um, because After School Matters has massive numbers of youth and Parks does too. Um, and what they originally saw LRNG for, which is I think different than how other people saw it, was a content delivery mechanism. Okay, and so when we think about taking learn, you know, uh, learning experiences and evidencing them through LRNG, so those could be in person or digital, but evidence is being um, sort of uh, uh, a, you know artifact in LRNG and issuing badges that young people understand. I would not say that's where it started. Okay, it really was, and basically they had a system, an online tool called EverFi for teaching financial literacy. They weren't totally happy with it. They were gonna switch to LRNG. They needed content built on there, but it was really just like, uh, you know, an uh, like an online knowledge repository where I, I don't think it sort of flipped the classroom. Youth were it, you watching videos and sort of, um, that, was, that was what it was, okay? Um, so that's, that's how this was piloted. Now, since then, one summer, those lead agencies have bought a lot more into this idea of badging and recognizing skills for young people, and also understood that playlists can be more engaging than just sort of like, uh, go watch this video and you're, and you're done, this thing. You know, actually having young people reflect and um, be more thoughtful about um, their summer experience and using LRNG to sort of supplement, scaffold, and augment some of the lessons during the summer. So how do we ensure that young people are leaving the summer, you know, thinking about what skills they've built? How do we make sure that when they're on the job, they're making connections, you know, stuff that's going to actually help them? How do we make sure that they're um, being thoughtful about what they're doing with their paychecks? Now, what also happened was what we learned through two very, very rough summers was that we had all sorts of playlists that had, um, uh, we were asking for reflection evidence. Um, and that for 9,000 youth is a, a gargantuan task to assess, even if we're assessing just to make sure they engage with the content. We're not looking at spelling, we're not looking at grammar, we're just, you know, we're just making sure that they have engaged with the content. It is, we're we're at that point talking about, okay, this playlist takes 30 seconds to assess. If they're, if we need a resubmission, it's a minute to assess. If you're talking doing that, you know, a thousand of those a week, it is, uh, you know, bonkers. Um, so as we understood that the content could get more engaging, the assessment had to get less rigorous for it. And or the evidence had to get less rigorous. and part of one of the things that LRNG has rolled out, this uh, multiple choice assessment has been partly because I've said, look, this is not scalable at this level in the summer um, without some sort of automated assessment. It's not the best practice for, for learning or, um, you know, showing uh, that you've engaged with content, but it's sort of where, where we sort of had to regress to sort of like a, a mean that allowed us to, to continue to offer this. Um, the other thing is that um, we have, there's, and one summer implements um, 
it, every delegate agency is different. So we can't, even though we have built over the years, and I, I'm happy to share these, we built two um, practitioner guides for the youth frontline staff that are working with young people about, you know, with uh, supplementary um, activities and prompts around the playlists so that it wasn't just young people going on there so that they're, they're you know, when it was, uh, if they were doing the payday ready playlist, but in its payday, there were some activities around like um, the the youth worker, the frontline staff, you know, facilitating activities around savings goals. And what are we all going to try to get our best friend not to get us to spend money on this month? And well, let's think about saving for the future and, and planning for success and that sort of thing. I think because it's implemented so differently across all of one summer, I don't know how many frontline staff were actually using these like really sort of um, uh very engaging practitioner guides. Um, so I say all that to say outside of mm -hmm. one summer, we have partners that do really, really thoughtful work with this that have really like thoughtful evidence that have a lot of work that's off that, you know, all, not all XPs are, are digital ones like there or, or are ones that are just digital content. One summer has to be all digital content, pretty easy to assess and Ha and do should not require a facilitator because we can't guarantee that across sites facilitators are going to be available. So um, it has been um, an interesting challenge in offering this at scale. Great introduction. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christina, Jeff, you have a thought to go next here? Yeah. What, is, what did any of that make you think about? Um, I'm curious, what are, what are the goals for the kids? Like, do you think that this, this, um, approach is supporting the goals that were set either by the kids or the programs or? Sure. Um, so there's a few things that are going on. There's some learning goals and then there's, um, sort of some opportunity goals. And I'll start with the opportunity goals because, um, at the end of sorry, I'll be quieter. Um, at the end of the summer, so youth can um, earn badges throughout the summer for completing playlists, but they can also earn badges at the end of the summer for demonstrating perfect attendance. Which, if you're a teenager and you've shown up to your summer job every single day on time, ready to work, that's like a great proxy for all sorts of things, right? You can also earn badges. And there's a, a problem in terms of adoption with this one because it requires the employers to adopt this. But all the employers who employ these thousands of youth uh, are asked to complete um, a survey on the youth's 21st century skills, on demonstrating certain 21st century skills. Um, and this survey is the MHA Labs Working Impact Survey. We have badged that. So for youth who are rated highly across a series of skills, they can earn a series of skills badges. Mm -hmm. Those badges, we've now, we've worked with LRNG to create an API where youth can share their LRNG badges on the one summer Chicago application. And that should, in theory, help their programs when they're placing them, level them up into more rigorous programming the next summer, because a lot of you at one summer youth are returners. So there's actually an opportunity that these badges can unlock. In terms of learning goals, we do try, we do try to ensure that, um, uh, the content of the playlists are aligning with One Summer Chicago's goals, as well as goals for young people. So to make a savings pledge, for example, to um, explore um, uh, credit and explore um, savings tools. Um, the challenge is with a program this large, um, we can't really follow up to see, you know, if you made a savings pledge, did you actually save that $30 you wanted to. If you um, explored, um, uh, you know, if you said, if you made a commitment at the end of the summer that you would get a re recommendation letter from your manager, did you do that? So all we have to track success is number of youth engaging with the content, not sort of anything beyond that, because it's just too massive. But yes, the content is uh, supposed to align to certain goals that are set around financial capabilities. Um, that that one summer Chicago sets, as well as um, as well as some work readiness skills. We CLX um, have played a much larger role than uh, uh, what we normally do with partners. We actually like help them create the content because this is just how is sort of path dependency. This is how the partnership was started, um, and they don't have the capacity to do that. Whereas partners throughout the year are you know we're building their capacity, but they're creating their own content, their badges, their playlists on there. Um, so we support them with content creation. And we try to make it as engaging as possible. Um, and we engage youth in user testing um, this stuff, but youth aren't there like, we're, we're not sort of pulling youth together. We, we do, 
we do get feedback from youth on what what are the most um, important you know skills they would want to learn within credit or banking or 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 what do they think of these activities? But the goals are really set at um, are driven by the One Summer Chicago Initiative and also the mayor's office. Can you talk more about the through the year organizations and what they do with LRG? Sure, we have. And, I mean, and is there any like is there any chance that kids from the summer will like learn about how to use the platform and then go into more rigorous stuff in the in the fall? Um, or, we have uh, yes, but that would be because they they're also involved with an organization that's using LRNG or they're doing their own searching on LRNG and. And I think like, I th I think youth are most likely using the platform when they have a caring adult in the room, you know, encouraging them to there, there, we don't, I don't think there's a ton of young people out there that are just going on to, right. you, you know, um, so um, we have organizations throughout the year that are using the platform to build playlists, to issue badges. Um, what we're trying to do is sort of a lot, because One Summer Chicago is such an opportunity for young people in, I mean, not not like the world's, it's not like the be all and the end all, it's a summer job, but mm -hmm. we're trying to align some of the work that goes on during the year and plug it into one summer so that if you have earned certain badges during the year at other organizations, how do we, you know, because we at CLX, and this is not a te technological solution, this is a brokering um, solution where CLX brokers relationships between parties saying like, hey, there's this amazing coding program going on over here, or there's this amazing urban agriculture program. Hey, one summer, because of relationships that we have, would you consider, if young people share their badges, would you consider prioritizing them? Not promising them anything, but, you know, if there's if there's slots, you know, slotting them in. Like, that's the sort of work that we're, we haven't gotten there yet, but we're looking towards. Mm -hmm. And even, D, and specifically DFSS, um, Department of Family and Support Services, has other programming that they run for young people. And they're trying to actually figure out how do they connect their year-round programming to one summer more, more robustly using badges. But outside of one summer, which does take up a whole lot of time, um, we work with, yeah, number, like sort of organizations big and small um, on playlists and badging. Um, you know, one of the things that, we ran a playlist design challenge last year and um, we're still following up. I actually have an email going out tomorrow because we have some partners who are still using the platform and some partners who aren't. And playlists um, are are very, are, it's, a hard it's a hard practice to shift to if you don't have sort of a real, someone who's really leading that work in an organization with buy-in from, leadership so you know the, our playlist design challenge offered us a, a mini grant a mini grant came along with it without that mini grant some orgs are still doing it and some orgs aren't so um it it's a, i have a lot more interest from organizations in just using the platform for badging when you say doing that they're building playlists they're using yeah they're building playlists they're getting their youth to to use playlists yeah okay mm -hmm. um and I heard you say, and I wanted to kind of circle back to it, that one of the ways playlists are used at first might be um, just for content delivery. Is, mm -hmm. is that is that true in the cases you were just saying? So mm -hmm. in that case, they're they're like it's it's just like a website where they're getting the information. Right. They're not necessarily submitting work through LRNG. Is that correct? No, they are submitting work, but that's sort of like, um, I wouldn't call it. So when I say just content delivery, I wouldn't call that sort of like great learning design, right? Like, um, no, no, no. it might be a way to start. So yeah. it is, and that that's how we oh. started for one summer, and even now for one summer. So all the activities have to be absolutely digital and have to be individual because mm -hmm. youth may be told to go home and do this on their phones, right? Um, or do it on their own time. They say it's mandatory. Go do this, De depending on you know who the facilitator is. So, but I think within there, like if you look at our be credit ready playlist. Um, there's some like really fun simulation games that we that uh, a partner of ours built on there. Um, mm -hmm. I think when I say just like content delivery, I think people are thinking about okay, this is a good way to just put content on there. They're not sort of thinking about the badge or the connection. Like the first year, it wasn't about the badge at all. It was about just like complete these activities. I think sort of thinking about the badge has you think about it more holistically because it's like what opportunities are attached to this. What are the skills that we're actually trying to get young people to? Um, to demonstrate or to build in this playlist. And I think thinking about it um, at, as content delivery isn't sort of starting at the place 
at the design place where I would start, which is at outcomes first and then backing into it. Uh -huh. Content delivery, when it was started, it was like, okay, well, we want people to know about banking. It wasn't like we want every young person in Chicago to ha to set up a bank account where they have direct deposit. And I still, we can't measure that still, but that we, knowing that we could sort of backwards m build into that. Sure. You know? and, and, and there on your site, there are portfolios. Um, LRNG has portfolios, yeah. Yeah, well, well yeah, but on the Chicago site, aren't, yeah. aren't there portfolios? Uh -huh. Where do those come from or how do they get involved? Sure. So there, and is it um, worth looking at those while you're talking? Should I? Um, you can. I would look at the Everyone Can Code initiative page. Um, okay. um, so I'll, so I'll do that while you talk. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so <laughs> portfolios are a great way to obviously share more than just badges. And I think Everyone Can Code, which is an initiative in Chicago, that well, it's a national initiative, but that's a partnership between Apple. Thrive, which is a, a collective impact organization, um, and, a, and a number of other folks, CPS, One Summer, um, have um, asked that participants in Everyone Can Code in One Summer Chicago, because they have a coding program that's being sort of sponsored by Apple, complete portfolios of their co of their coding work on LRNG. So they can upload their coding work, they can upload their resume, they can upload the, the Everyone Code playlist they did, which is um, uh, a, an, an adaptation of uh, Apple's um, app design curriculum. Um, now, is this stuff happening in the summer or not? In the summer, yes. It is, okay. So I'm a little confused, like how, but it's not one Chicago? I, it is part of one summer. It's like a boutique okay, program. It's not sort of a, a typical program. It's like a little, it's, it's like a special boutique program they have. So if you okay. type in, in search, um, everyone can code in the search box up at the top. And give it a second. Don't press enter. This is a funny, I've given them this feedback. Um, no, put, your, <laughs> put your mouse in there again. And, and then search again? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. No, no, they don't search again. And then see, everyone can code under organizations. Select that. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now select, scroll down, select portfolio. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. So young people have been asked to share their portfolios um, in the idea. These are these are based on stuff they've been working on throughout the year. These are young people who were in the Everyone Can Code summer program last year. And the idea is this summer uh, they'll be the, eligible for a the more The parameters advanced. to that program, how long is it? Uh, it's six, it's it? just like a typical once it's six weeks um, mm -hmm. during the summer. They have um That's longer delegate. than that. Yeah. It's a, it's the same length of um, time as one summer Chicago. Okay. Um, and they have delegate agencies who specialize in coding programs um, or who have a, a coding, you know, someone who could teach coding. Um, doing just the app sorry to ask me the details on it, but are the kids still getting paid summer youth to do these programs or? Yeah, yeah it's like a learn and earn. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to ask if there was some of that going on, but so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so yeah. can I click on one of these or yeah, all of them, one, any of them? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what's in them, but so some of them are probably better than others. Okay. Okay. So not this one because it looked like, no, go back. This looks like a one that just used a template. So let's actually um, find someone with a picture. So let's oh, look. These are the yeah. templates I see. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the templates. Yeah. Chicago and. Chicago and Outlook. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Christina, do you want to read that? Sure. <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> what's the top say? Chicago and and Chicago the Chicago and Outlook by cool. Adeline Avila. Mm -hmm. Introduction to coding. A short while ago, I graduated from Eric Solerio Academy High School on the south side of Chicago. In my time there, I was exposed to the Everyone Can Code initiative through One City Summer Chicago, a summer program dedicated to helping young Chicagoans off the streets, off of the streets. Since then, my summers have been devoted to app development. Hmm. With that in mind, I'm very thankful for the many doors coding has opened for me and the rest of the youth in the city. One summer Chicago experiences, thanks to the Everyone Can Code initiative, I developed an app in the summer of 2017 
that was intended to better output to better the output of information within Chicago public high schools. More specifically, the app provided students with easy access to grades, events, updates, a college of best fit cal cal calculator, bell schedules, and so much more. Similarly, in the summer of 2018, I developed an app for trainees in an Adobe Creative Suite training program while interning at the Chicago Portfolio School. Cool. The Chicago Portfolio School is a post-secondary? Yeah, I think it's. I think it may be like a marketing, like one of those portfolio schools where you have to go before you get a job in marketing or creative. Okay, and this is, sure this, this is this is her badge she got with the Swift training program. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you want to say more about that? Um, I I've heard it referred to, but sure. And again, so this is an example of you're talking about. Yeah, go ahead. We, I think LRNG National actually really helped out with the content on this. This is not something I was super involved in, but. Um, they um, took um, a curriculum that Apple built around um, uh, building an app and um, not the coding part, but the um, like brainstorming, prototyping, evaluating the app, and they playlisted it. And so it's a short playlist that, that youth can complete in about four hours. Um, they can earn a badge for, um, for that. Um, and they cool um and they uh also earned badges like sort of co for completing the um swift coding uh, actual swift coding challenges the uh challenge there is swift uh, which is apple's coding language is not it's an app so it's you can't do it on a computer um you have to do it on an uh, and specifically i think on an ipad so it's not like you could um you could playlist that challenge because you have to go, you have to be in this Apple app for that. So it's basically like a certificate um, that of achievement that you successfully completed the Swift coding, which is the evidence because you can't include like the actual evidence that you completed it because you can't extract it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so there's a badge for that. And, um, and uh, then they have a showcase that they're working towards that Apple puts on at the end of the summer. And so they may have uploaded some of their work for the showcase in here too. Okay. All right, so how many of these programs are going on and who who does the assessment of these, of this work in those? I think I think LRNG, yeah. uh, LRNG does the assessment of the um, of the Apple code, Swift coding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is like a total. I think last summer it was like a hundred youth. This summer it'll be two hundred youth. It's relatively small compared to the size of. Um, it's nice in that portfolio. Just the fact that she was documenting, like talking about a couple summers, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. she could share yeah. work across a couple summers. Mm -hmm. I think these portfolios are really interesting. Yeah, they're cool. They're very really, they're cool. Can I ask a dumb question? There's please? no such thing as a dumb. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. So, uh, I, Kansas City, I don't think has a, a youth program the way this is, and so I can't wrap my head around. So, just want to make sure I understand what One Summer Chicago is. Sure. So, because I hear, so at some point I hear these are summer jobs, mm -hmm. and then I hear, then it sounds more like summer school, and so I'm not, what, what is, when am I working on a playlist? When I go to One Summer Chicago, so am that's, I going to a job? You're going to a job. So basically, you have, in the at least in, in, it looks different across programs, but yes, you're going to a summer job that's 20 hours a week. Some of these jobs are, okay. they look so like very I might different. be emptying trash cans or doing a job. Right. Or you may be at yeah. Walgreens or your job may be, if you're lucky enough to be in Everyone Can Code, to go to your delegate agency. So like Westside Health Authority, which has someone there who is actually like an expert coder. And every day you go and you do sort of what's called learn and earn, which is, um, you know, group project-based activities or individual activities where you're learning to code. Um, so you're not actually working, f you're not working in the sense of like, uh, you know, 
your typical summer job. You're doing something that's more about getting paid to learn. And learning those, in context, like they'd be learning about coding in that context. In which context? Like whatever the agency was. No, no. This is like Apple. So it's very boutique. It's like an Apple. You're learning Apple code. So you're doing uh, coding activities with Swift, which is like gaming. And then you're coming up with your own app. Um, and those are much more facilitated. And frankly, like in terms of like some, one summer Chicago doesn't pay minimum wage. It's it's been at like eight seventy five for like I don't know how for years and minimum wage in Chicago is now like ten or eleven or something, and so you know I think the model like a learn and earn model like everyone can code can be much more well I think it's always much more beneficial to young people um, rather than like just picking up trash on the side of the road which is like some of the summer jobs are that the beautification projects, um, but if you're, you're not paying minimum wage, you're going to be losing youth to like the second you get a job at target that does pay minimum wage. Why would you stay? So I think those programs that are um, maybe a little more skills focused are where you could say, yes, I, you know, I didn't get minimum wage, but I got all these incredible skills. You see at, on the everyone can code page, there's a picture of Obama for those showcase winners. Obama wanted to come meet some one summer Chicago youth and the showcase winners got to go meet him at Solorio high school. Like that's light. I mean, it was like life changing for some of them. Um, so there, so, so you're, you, it's a great question and there's not a simple answer. The jobs look different across the board, mm -hmm. but typically it's 20 hours a week. The pay is like t at some agencies it's different. So CTE pays, pays like 10 where DFSS pays like 875. It's six weeks long. Um, uh, the delegate agencies that um, work with CHA and DFSS are responsible for placing youth in jobs. So sometimes they work for the city. Sometimes they work at corporate partnerships like Walgreens, for example, or United. So if I'm uh, a youth and I'm, I'm working for CT in the CP at, in the college, Chicago public schools, I have a 20 hour a week job that could be anything, mowing mm -hmm. lawns, cutting mm -hmm. grass, whatever. And when am I doing playlists? So this is the thing. So some agencies actually um, build it in if they're running like their own, if they're running their own job program, okay? So like ECC, Everyone Can Code, they would do that playlist on the Everyone Can Code site. And some of the other agencies that are involved, um, they may have young people come there and um, they, they may either have agreements with employers where the youth are only going to be at the em uh, employer 18 hours a week and they're going to spend two hours on a Thursday doing some mentoring with the agency or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or in most cases, the agency is like, you're going to go do this on your own time. Okay. Okay. Is, um, the sorry, good. did, did you have a follow-up, Jeff, or that's good? I was going to ask, is this portfolio, I'm bringing it back again here. Is this a, a more typical, not one of the quote unquote boutique ones? Uh, whose portfolio? Is this in Everyone Can Code? Yeah, am I sharing it yet? Wait, hold on. So here's the thing, um, Paul. Yeah. Um, portfolios are really new. And yeah, got, one, of the totally guys, <laughs> one of the guys yeah. leading Everyone Can Code is requiring everyone to create a portfolio if you want to be in next year's, in this summer's Everyone Can Code. So if you were in last summer's Everyone Can Code and you want to be in this summer, you have to create a portfolio. So this is probably where there's the largest use of portfolios across the board. I don't actually uh -huh. know that there's other... I mean, we could go looking, but most of the portfolios I'm seeing are with youth who have been in Everyone Can Code. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, we have a <laughs> we have some really wonderful ones, in it, and then a whole lot of attempts um, on mm -hmm. on youth voices too. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But so this person did Everyone Can Code and earned these four badges. Is that right? Um, yeah. Okay. Or shared these four badges, right? Because they, they, right. yeah. they might have earned more. They can choose, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, what else do you, I mean, do you want to sort of point to? I, I, I'm curious. Um, th there was some mention in one of the product calls about. Um, building toward credit and Chicago doing some work around that. Can you 
I Get cannot the because that, that is that I cannot. Okay. Yeah, that's actually um, LRNG has decided that Chicago is a pilot city for some of their credit work, and so mm -hmm. they're piloting with an organization called Back of the. No, that's a different thing. I cannot. I have. Okay. I've. I mean, I've asked, um, <laughs> but I. I will be excited to share what we learn when it gets rolled out. But I don't. It's not. It's not. Um, I don't even think you can. It's not even on the LRNG platform yet. Like what? No, you it isn't. No, I, I, was, I was just hoping you were. You had some touch in that too. I'm yeah. sorry. No, I don't. I'm interested in it because I used to work with uh, very closely with the city colleges here in Chicago, and I'd love to uh, dig into articulation agreements between SNHU and the city colleges because I think that's probably where we're going to see. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, a lot of ex excitement and value. Um, Jessica, this. Is Paul's heard me. I've, I've brought this up before, and it's a little bit of a, um, you know, I heard one kid one time talk about it, and I still keep thinking about this. So, I, you know, so pardon me if this is a little bit of a, um, but at one of those uh, summits, um, I heard one of the kids present about, and I think he was from Chicago, present about doing the payday ready playlist. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and how life changing it was for him and how he then turned around and taught his brother and sister and family how to be payday ready. Like, hmm. you know, he told this story and I remember thinking like, whoa, like, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and he sort of like, he ends up like with the curriculum, you know, like he just did the curriculum and now he has this curriculum. Oh. He can share with others, right? Which mm -hmm. I thought was like, oh, that that's like an interesting design opportunity. And so I've been thinking about like, like, and it's a scale, it's a scale or a spread question too. It's like, could we design and, and in our work, we haven't even gotten to this, but could we design ways that, that peers, there's like, kind of a, a badge, you can you you succeed on a playlist, and then you get another badge that 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 be, that makes you a mentor for other peers mm -hmm. um, to you know, and then you can be an assessor of mm -hmm. your peers mm -hmm. and, or a mentor, um, you know. However, like that, and it makes me think about these paths where like youth can do a lot of things mm -hmm. across a sort of range of um, skills, or they can go deep. Mm -hmm. And this would be like a place to go deeper into sort of teaching and mentoring and, you know, mm -hmm. developing out leadership. Um, anyway, I was just wondering if like the, any, any experiments around that have happened and, or if you have any thoughts about that, cause I mean, Here's, yeah. And, and sort of my, I don't, I don't think my answer is like probably super like visionary, but my sense with, where I sort of fall on that is, uh, so I'll give you an example, um, with uh, some of the, with one of the financial um, playlists that's for um, one of this, the sub programs in one summer Chicago called Chicago Ability. It's this program for about a thousand youth who are 14 and 15 years old and they have a payday basics playlist. It's even lighter than the payday ba ready playlist because they're not even getting, um, paychecks are getting a stipend and so we can't like, and it's, you can't do direct deposit. So there's only certain things, but they can, um, when they complete that, they can apply, um, they can fill out an application to be interviewed for a, spe a few spots that the Economic Awareness Council offers as internships during the year. So they don't get the internship, but they can get a chance to interview for the internship. Mm -hmm. Economic Awareness Council does amazing work with youth year round um, and youth can become peer money mentors, meaning they go out to one summer Chicago youth and they present on direct deposits, on budgeting, on so it's near peer mentoring on financial literacy. Right, right, right. Is this money mind you're talking about or not? Uh, no, this is uh, something called um, uh, at Payday Basics through Chicago Ability, oh, which is Chicago. a different partner page, but it's a program of One Summer Chicago. Okay, okay. Um, it's basically Payday Ready, um, but just with like a different opportunity um, mm -hmm. because the age group is appropriate for for the um, the uh, the program that EAC that Economic Awareness Council is offering. Yeah. I would say that with I I would say that. I would look to the caring adult in the room who's working with young people on playlists to identify youth that would be um, 
interested and willing to be assessors or mentors. Mm -hmm. I can't sort of wrap my head around what it would look like, even though I understand it theoretically, when you do a certain amount of playlists on the subject, you then get invited to be a mentor or assessor. I understand what that looks like in theory, and it's like a good idea. I just, from my work, like without a caring adult sort of encouraging you to do this, giving you coaching on this. Yeah. I, and especially with the playlist that, so it depends, and it also depends on how rigorous the playlist is. If it's an incredibly rigorous play, if you're doing a series of incredibly rigorous playlists and someone's doing a really thoughtful assessment, I think that's a great way of determining whether someone's going to be um, uh, interested and, uh, and a good near peer mentor. Yeah, and so if those are available, then yeah, maybe there's a way to sort of tag those that you can get. And maybe that's an opportunity for when you earn the badge, you then can do this. And maybe there's a stipend for doing that. I think with the one summer playlist, for example, none of those are rigorous enough to say that if you complete these, you should be mentoring on this. I, yeah. I, I, um, no, and I'm not trying to downplay the one summer playlist. I, but we all understand that there, are, that there is sort of a capacity um, and resource issue around there where, you know, they have to be able to be done in like each half an hour assessment has to be really easy. Um, youth may not have any caring adults in the room when they're completing it. They may be completing it on their phone in their own time without any facilitation. And so I would say those aren't the ones that we'd be looking to, to say, yes, this young person has, um, has really a commitment to this and we should try to find them additional opportunities. Yeah. Um, so, it, so then I would say, you know, we're really looking at the programs that work with these young people. Now, some of our programs year round are building really rigorous playlists, but they, they're also on a much smaller scale. So they would know if there's an opportunity, which young people would be, they wouldn't need, you know, the young person to complete. I mean, they would need a young person to complete a series of, of playlists. So you at minimum have to do that, but they would also know what sort of coaching that young person would need to coach others. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would hate to sort of remove the human element in that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. No, no, just to say what I, you know how a, a youth now, when they're on a playlist, can click and, and get advice from Evan or whoever's on duty for, you know, dealing with technical issues. Uh -huh. I think it'd be really interesting to have that same box available for mentors, right? Mm -hmm. So before it gets to the assessment place, like I'm working on this XP, um, you know, uh, and you know, they could ask peers questions about stuff. So that might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that would require yeah. playlists that need people to ask questions about. I mean, I think that's kind of what you're getting at is that the, the playlists yeah. are at a level where they can be really, right. you watch the video, you fill out the multiple choice thing there. I don't know how much you would need right. a person to, to right. say, Oh, here, let me help you with this. I think more rigorous playlists. I think that's a really cool yeah. idea. Yeah. Some of our year round ones that our partners have built are more rigorous and that could be a totally appropriate um, exercise. Can I, I have this question, which is, and I'm just thinking about myself as a kid in the summer. Um, so the kid that you described, like who doesn't have a caring adult, and maybe they're doing this on their own. I mean, this, yeah. this they, may, do have, they do have caring adults. I don't want to say no, no, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't mean in the room. Right about right orphans. Yeah. No, no. I mean, <laughs> but just you know, the idea that they're they're gonna. So my question is kind of brutal, but it's like, why would they do it at all? What it's what is mandatory? Okay. Okay. So if I have this job, part of the job yeah. is I have to do some playlists. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that squares the circle for me. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Jessica, can you talk a little bit about um, the impact you've seen of LRD on the organizations and and one one Chicago and so forth? Like, it doesn't. It, it, to my, uh, you know, you you know this already, but the the kinds of playlists we want kids to use in school situations, mm -hmm. teachers are saying like they've got to be rigorous, they've got to be yeah, of you know, course, yeah, right, right, yeah. So, so I guess I'm wondering, has it opened up doors for um, with teachers with other adults in Chicago, you know, in the organizations you're working in? 
Yeah, some organizations have actually seen how the playlist model ca can benefit them, uh, that they can um, expand what they're doing using playlists during the year, mm -hmm. uh, that they um, that they can uh, go deeper or supplement what they're doing during the year. Um, I think where it's where it's had most of an impact is people thinking about badging and recognition and celebrating skills and making skills transparent for young people. So. Mm -hmm you don't necessarily need a playlist for that because you could issue a badge without a playlist. Um, and so when, you know, when we talk to- well, uh, Slow down a little bit. I mean, you could issue a badge without a playlist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you can, but badges need to have work in yeah. them. When you right? issue a, so, yeah, when you issue a badge without a playlist, you're attaching, you as the issuer are attaching evidence to it. Okay. I just- just practically, I, yeah. The one thing I love about playlists is that they help the youth organize that digital work, right? So imagining doing that without some system to organize that work feels, I don't know. Do you have experience with doing that? Yeah, it's uh, it's very hard. It's okay. It's, it's like <laughs> Good. We're requires agreeing. a lot of yeah. capacity. Um, um, yeah. Um, uh, so, but we're also talking smaller programs, right? We're not talking one summer Chicago. We're talking programs that are doing this for, you know, like, like 20 young people, let's say, and mm -hmm. let's say they each have, they've each built a website or they each have, um, uh, I, I agree. It's easier when young people are uploading their evidence into a playlist because then all you have to do is assess it. Right. But then you have a capacity issue on assessing. Yeah. Right. So there's capacity challenges either way. Either you're responsible for uploading all of your youth work or you're responsible for assessing all of your youth work. Yeah, with the teacher I'm working with right now, we have we have six six category uh, six um, what are they called sections in the portfolio. And three of them are playlist and then three of them don't have playlist and like keeping track of the th the work that goes into th the three sections that aren't in a playlist mm -hmm. is driving us crazy, right? Yeah. But just to say, I, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard. But I, so I don't know where I was going with this, but one Chicago seems like a, it, it, it's a, like a, a nice first step, mm -hmm. but how do we get to the rigor stuff? And, and so or, I think yeah. during the year, yeah, one summer Chicago is not the place for, I mean, the boutique programs are more rigorous. Like everyone can code. There's more rigor there. Well, so so let me ask that first. Is, is there a chance for? I mean, you say boutique, but then you say two hundred students. So, at yeah, least but in, in a to my years, that's not so boutique. Yeah, well, well in a program yeah. of thirty-one thousand, it is. I get that. Yes. Um, so, could there be more programs like that? Are you dreaming of that, or yeah? It's sort of. It's not up to me because I don't come up with the programs. So, um, it, okay. it it sort of depends. Mm -hmm. I'll One look to it. Yeah sort of related maybe um i mean just because we're we've been doing the national assessment of the national playlist right and you kind of get kids doing these things and you don't know where they're coming from if there's a carrying adult in the room which often comes up because sometimes you want to say like i mean sometimes we just say back to the kid maybe ask uh, an adult or a peer um, mm -hmm. To, to talk this through or something like that, because you can tell that they're like sort of getting it, but not, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, uh, but do you see many of your kids, like I don't even know if Chicago kids are using those other playlists, you know, or, or if it's sparking this idea that like they might do some playlists and then see another playlist and mm -hmm. decide, oh, I wanna do that one and then give it a try um mm -hmm. because it's available you know like I, in some ways i'm just sort of, i'm trying to understand like how those national playlists get situated during the summer and maybe it's just outside their time and really only the kids who want you know yeah, it's going to be only the kids who want which which actually sorry uh, jogs my so for the two playlists paul that you had mentioned um yeah what are you thinking what are you guys thinking for those so so um, I can share it and talk about it a little bit. But uh, as I'm doing it, I, I know that I cut you off in, in trying to answer the question how you're reaching toward rigor, though. That I, is it, out, outside of one summer for the most part. So in the in uh, the year round programs with badge training and playlist training, um, where I'm not we're not 
I, I would say I don't want to, I, I don't want to undersell the one summer playlist. I would just say that they, they have to meet sort of certain, they, they meet the goals there that are set out for them, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they can't, they just can't be a heavy lift. They're sort of like an introduction, a light touch, which is what they're meant to be. We're not saying when you do these series of financial capability playlists, you're going to go into banking now. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you have more knowledge um, about your financial power. Um, but yes, the rigor happens um, with the organizations that we're working with in, throughout the year that we're offering more rigorous training on that have sort of different, there's different expectations for what their playlist should look like and what their badges should look like. So within this conversation, um, and I'm not sharing this, am I? It's a presenter one. I don't know. If, anyway, so um, what we what we did think was to pair the playlist. So the photos one, we imagined it first. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's just say, still say, a, a youth could do this really fast and on their own. Mm -hmm. But then what we were hoping is that. So oh, I don't have to click on the whole thing, but I did, right? So they need to go find a place that's important to them, take pictures there, put one mm, picture cool. up here, and then put up a, a gallery of pictures. Beautiful. So that, I don't know if, anyway, we can even make this Fun. faster, I don't know. What, yeah. So do you think a, a one summer kid could do this? Or not every, yeah. not all, yeah. And Absolutely. then the, the idea is that, and, and we don't have this infrastructure built necessarily yet, but the idea behind this is that once a, a youth finishes this one, mm -hmm. right, we can say to them, okay, the assessor can say to them, okay, there is a, a poetry playlist too, right, to go to, right? Um, and we can, but that one's going to take somebody to help you with it more. Whoops, I clicked the wrong one. Right, so we'll mentor you through this. Right, so this one requires you to read some poems. Uh, Chicago's is uh, two poems by Gwendolyn Brooks. Yeah, cool. And then they write a poem um, like that poem about the place they took the photos in. Then they do some revision work and they eventually and, and post it either back up on Youth Voices or on um, Instagram. And then they um, then they comment on other people's so other other youth who have done the same project. Um, all right, so that that's the idea. Is that we think that makes sense, but I don't know. We need to think harder about how to capture the summer youth folks in that first one, so there's some connection, and then have a assessor mentor relationship with those few who want to go on. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense to do yeah, to yeah, that I'm way? Thinking, or, yeah. yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I like how they're sort of set up and the second one um, asks them, you know, brings back that first one. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, uh, and you can build it, you, because you, you know, you can build it, this doesn't help sort of, uh, you can build it so that the second one has to be unlocked after earning the first badge. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We built these prior to that tool. Okay, gotcha. And and <laughs> in using them in schools, uh -huh. some kids are were dragging their feet around the taking the photos, and we wanted to jump into the poetry one okay. already. So uh, gotcha. yeah, <laughs> um, I this, yeah. No, I I think we should try sort of featuring them and see what happens. Um, I think that you, there'll be a handful, first of all, you know, you're not gonna get 9,000 youth doing them, but you don't have the capacity to have 9,000 youth doing no, them. So right. if yeah. you have, uh, <laughs> you know, a few hundred or, you know, yeah, 50 we, or, or 60 youth doing that could be really informative. And I would love to learn about that because all all the content we have up on, once, on the One Summer page is very much workforce focused. And I think it would be cool to have something for them that is, and the other thing, it tells them that LRG is not just a workforce platform. So I think it actually benefits sort of from like a, a messaging angle too, that there's more on the platform. Um, yeah, it's not workforce, but you know, it's place, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah there's um, something, yeah. Can we feature national content on the One Summer Chicago page? Um, is that a question? You can. That was a question. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that you're we asking. Do you oh, have permission, okay. or do you are you asking technically how to do yeah, it? I'll ask Evan technically what would. Yes, you can it. feature it. Yes. Um. So that's an org. Uh huh. Yeah, the, you would just have to feature. Yeah. Yes. Well, sorry, we, it wouldn't actually be featured. It would be because we have to feature oh, the playlist. You, are mandatory. So your question was, can you feature national? Can, can I put national content on the One Summer Chicago page so that you it still goes to you to assess, but it shows up on the One Summer Chicago page? That's a good question. I don't know the I answer. I thought you could. I don't think you can right now. We right have to now? Yeah. No, I, I can't imagine it because in that, you, you can you only have access to your own stuff, I think, when you feature yeah. something. Right, so they have to go out to the national to see, even see that stuff. That's not going to be then that. So let me find out if there's a way that the devs can put that on the One Summer Chicago page. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Paul, one thing got that something I, done tonight. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One thing what? I was when I look at them next to each other i realized that like there isn't really it would be great if we could think about a verbal indicator in the title even that's like i mean the crude way would be places we love a and places we love b um yeah, yeah. but it could be like get started with places we love photos or something you know that that helps like like give it some sense of timing because when you yeah, see some that, of the some yeah. of the language that that we're familiar with by the way is is to start thinking about the the early ones being makes right mm -hmm. here's a quick make maybe you know, yeah. and, then, and then and here's and then here's the inquiry to do so mm -hmm. that's that's one one distinction i was imagining mm -hmm. but, we're, yeah. we're also going to put on the national channel we have a take action playlist but we're hoping and it really starts with a just make a poster. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's really what, like, make a poster about something you care about, you know, that you might share. And, and hang it up somewhere. And hang mm -hmm. it up somewhere. And, <laughs> uh, no, you know. mm -hmm. and, then, and then the next step is like, okay, now go deeper around this topic. So, you know, and so you can choose. You can start to do that, or you can like actually do some research and do some writing and do a public piece about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, that's the design we've been playing with. Like, if you make something first because it's like of interest and it's sort of easy mm -hmm. to start with that, and you get some ideas out, and then you can dive in more. Sure. Yeah, uh -huh. but let's solve let's solve that technical problem because if the kid, if the youth don't even see them even see on them. their page, yeah. Yeah, I, I do have to make uh, sure that it's okay with one summer to put it on there. I think it would definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, but at a minimum, we should be able to put it on the Chicago discovery feed so that everyone sees it. Cause that, yeah. I don't know. What, I'm wondering how people, see, they must see them cause we get kids in the summer using them somehow. Yeah, so I, th I think they're like, you know, going out to LRNG and they see it. So, so long as we could figure it on the Chicago page, I think you'll get some youth doing it. We can also promote it. Like also through the summer, I can promote, we have a newsletter that goes out to the delegate agencies every week. So I can promote it right. partly through the summer when a lot of youth have completed their other playlists. And I would say just for this summer to solve the problem of there being two and not knowing which one, let's just promote the photo one. Yeah. Sure. And then you know, we'll follow up after and that. We can yeah. add assessors can say, hey, there's this other one if you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Poetry. Cool. Jeff, did all of your questions get answered tonight? Yeah. <laughs> oh, every every one of them. I, <laughs> I guess I'm I'm and this is just because I haven't been around this a lot, but I, I do kind of wonder they are so different, like the the photo and poetry, yeah, playlists versus the sort of workforce facing. And I wonder if, if <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I can see the there's a practicality to the ones that I've been assessing that I wonder if is if that's part of the mission, right? Like, that's the goal of the yeah. one summer Chicago is we want to walk away with these like fundamental yeah they seem very 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 basic rudimentary skills for mm -hmm. living um yeah so but there I, are lots of jobs in the arts oh yeah yeah <laughs> i mean I, i'm not downplaying i know that. i know you're I'm not more, I, but i think it's worth remembering yeah. is there a, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But to your point, yeah, no, no, I see, Jeff, what you're saying. I think maybe, you know, now that I'm thinking about this, it may make sense to feature these on the Chicago page because youth end up going to the Chicago page once they're on the One Summer page, but maybe not put it on the One Summer page next to these, like, sort of utilitarian playlists that are, uh, and plus, I'd have to find out, I, I know we could put them on the Chicago page for sure. I don't know that we're allowed to put them on the summer page. Well, and I, especially if they're going to be mandatory, right? So then, so then on some degree they become mandatory that a kid, it's going to be in the, I'm assuming right. it's going to be in the list of lists that say you have to work on these. Um, and so I, I don't know. I just don't know how that fits the goal of one summer. I know it fits my goal as a human, but I don't yeah. know if it, you know, if it yeah, fits it does. The goal it doesn't. Um, these would just be extra that we would throw in. So, um, yeah, let me let me think about where they they would fit. I definitely think the Chicago page, and I could definitely find out from Evan. And then I could find out, for example, if it's yeah, I, I'll I'll will find out, guys. Cool, Jessica. Thank you for sharing. Um, of all course, of yeah, thank you. It's so uh, I mean, Thanks for letting me listen. This has been... really understand the con or, you know, like just understanding the context better, mm -hmm. and, and the changing context because yes, you know, this is three years grown, right, mm -hmm. or however many. So anyway, yeah, thanks. yeah, and someday I'd love to share with you some of the non-workforce playlists that are being created in Chicago, which are also very exciting. Yeah, I can see yeah, some. Of them. Yeah, really yeah, cool. All right, guys, thanks, thanks so thanks much for having me. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. See you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Yep, thanks.